Hi, Guy from DB Coder here, and I'm uh, here to give you a whirlwind demo of DB Coder, uh, a free and open source IDE for MongoDB. So here's the product. You can see it's got four major sections in the UI. We have the connections that you can um, uh, that connect to MongoDB servers that you're dealing with. Beneath that, we have a tree structure that shows databases, collections, um, users, roles, etc. Um, a code editor over here on the right and directly below that an output panel for um, query output. Now the editor is the core of the product in many respects and you, we've worked very hard to make it a very powerful editor for MongoDB coding. Uh, it has uh, syntax highlighting, it's got formatting uh, and it's got autocomplete. Um, so if you want autocomplete you just merely I'll press control space and you'll get a, a list of possible completions for whatever you've typed so far. So you can do um, pretty much everything that you might want to do um, in this editor, but we don't want to code everything we do because that's inefficient. A lot of coding is like, just like boilerplate. So for that we have you know typical GUI controls. So right-click actions on the tree gives you access to a wide variety of um, administrative um, functions such as looking at the log, setting um, parameters, killing operations, loading and unloading data. And within the database um, panel and collection we have a lot of things that are more to do with um, managing the data. So for instance if we click on a collection we can um, view it as a table and we'll see a nice tabular rendering of the data that's within this um, collection and nested um, Nested arrays are shown here collapsed, but we can expand them just by clicking show. There you see these are all of the rentals for this particular customer. And if we click on the payments um, attribute, that's another array that's got all the payments the customer has made. And we can you can expand or contract these in bulk if you like. If you want to do a query on this um, collection or any collection, um, we have uh, two ways of doing it. Simple query lets you simply um, build up a find command and just fill in the blanks. You don't need to know the attribute names because we've examined the collection and we know them. And you can see as I'm typing in here it is creating code over there in the editor window so the code I'm creating can be um, saved to a file and reused or um, you know you can do whatever you want with it really. And so there we go there's our query. Um, we can see that as a tabular output if we want, or as a chart for that matter. I'll show you that in a bit. And here, um, the uh, code in here, we can do whatever we could do with something we typed ourselves, which includes getting an execution plan for it. So if we want to see if an index has been used, we can do that. So here we see the execution plan for this particular query. We see it's using an index, and we give you some statistics and um, plain English explanations of the execution plan, which can be very, very useful. Another thing we can do here from the editor, if you're a Node.js programmer and you, you're you working out a query, uh, you get its indexing right and so forth, and now you want to move it into Node.js code, you just right click here and say translate to native code, and here we've created Node.js compatible code that is a um, parameterizes the query as a function, uh, creates promises to handle the um, asynchronous uh, nature of the MongoDB driver. And if you want to execute this Node.js code, you can do it right inside our product because we've got a little embedded Node.js driver. So that's kind of handy if, if you're Node.js um, programmer. The other way we can extract data is um, through the aggregation framework. And the aggregation framework, as you know, is a much more powerful tool than Find, but it can be um, uh, p potentially quite difficult to build up a, a properly formatted aggregation pipeline. We've tried to make it very easy, you just need to um, add the elements that you want to um, add to the pipeline, fill in the blanks as we did before, so here I'm going to pick um, films in this film database to write a G or PG, just give myself the space there, um, and then once I've done that, I can go on and um, create joins with other collections or do all the other things that the aggregation framework allows us to do. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to do a quick grouping. I'll just group by category um, and rating. Um, and that gives us by default a count of all of the um, of all of the category and rating films. But um, we could add any other aggregation we want. We've got access to the full aggregation. Um, commands. 
if you want to have a look at this data in a sort of like a more graphical way, um, you can click chart here. Um, we'll draw a chart of this data so that you can sort of see its shape and um, get a feel for it. You can draw a chart of any data wherever we display elsewhere in the product as well. So that's um, the sort of thing you can do um, in the tree. We could create an index for this collection if we weren't happy with the execution plan we saw before. Um, uh, and we can look at um, users and roles and so forth. Um, lots of stuff in here. One more thing I'll show you is the storage manager that we've built. Um, this is designed to let you, give you insight into how your disk storage is used. So here we're seeing uh, in the inner circle we're seeing how much space is used by each database. Then as we move out we see the amount used by each collection, perhaps its indexes, and then even inside the collection how much storage is used by various um, nested arrays. So this collection here, company data, we can see that a great deal of it is taken up by images. And let's just drill into company data directly. We can see that 58% uh, of it is images, 33% of it are marketing images, um, team building are most of them, the Hawaii trip and then we find here that 16% of the storage here is drinking photos so perhaps we could get rid of those. Um, so that's uh, that's a quick little view of um, DB Coder. There's lots I didn't have time to show you but hopefully that gives you a sense of um, what we've got to offer here. It's completely free and open source product available for download at dbcoder.com. Um, I hope you give it a try. I hope you tell us what you think about it. If there's anything you think we should add to it, let us know and we'll do our best to oblige. Thank you.